Hey there, Pam Coburn Litvak here. Welcome to part two of my series on cognitive therapy, the gold standard for dealing with depression and anxiety. You probably remember Ted, our college student friend from part one. Ted took a test a few days ago, and the teacher just posted the class grades. He studied hard and was hoping for an A, but he got a B instead. No big deal, right? After all, a B is a decent grade. But Ted doesn't see it that way. Ted thinks to himself, I can't believe I got a stupid B on that test. I totally bombed it. Ted's disappointment has been amplified by a distorted belief called all-or-nothing thinking. This means that he thinks in extreme all-or-nothing terms. Everything gets boiled down to one of only two categories, black or white, terrible or wonderful, down or up, completely wrong or completely right. Maybe you and I can relate to this. There are some telltale signs that we use this distorted belief too. The first is using a lot of all or nothing words in our thinking or conversation. Terms that put things into extremes, like, I always mess things up, or you never listen to me. Everything is wrong, or nothing is right. I have to do well, or I can't do well. These terms can create a false either or view of the world. Either I'm perfect, or I'm an utter failure. Perfectionism is another sign of all or nothing thinking. Psychologically speaking, perfectionism has two parts, work and worries. Perfectionistic work involves setting high goals and working hard to meet them. This is what world-class athletes do to make them, well, world-class. And there's a definite upside to perfectionistic work, higher achievement. But there can be a downside as well, ongoing stress, not to mention disappointment. Perfectionistic worries happen in the mind. Harsh self-criticism, self-doubt, and constant concerns about one's mistakes or what others may think of them. Both can be stressful, but of the two, perfectionistic worries are the more dangerous and linked to higher risk of depression and anxiety. Both are linked to other problems too, like eating disorders, body dysmorphic disorder, insomnia, social anxiety, and obsessive compulsive disorder. So our goal is to help Ted get over his all-or-nothing, perfectionistic view of life. Because thinking in such black-and-white terms doesn't allow us to see the many shades of gray in life. Cognitive therapy can definitely help. In my last series, I categorized these techniques into four categories, which I called the four roads out of anxiety and depression. They're easy to remember because they all start with R. Do your research. Be a realist find the right ratio, and follow the golden rule. Now let's apply these principles to all or nothing thinking. Remember that those who have these distorted thoughts use a lot of all or nothing words. Doing our research involves asking questions like, are we using these words just to polarize our view of things? Would most others agree with these words or would they think they're too extreme? Using optimistic realism would involve asking, would other less extreme words describe the situation in a more realistic way? One exercise Ted can try is measuring his problems on a stress scale, with zero meaning no stress and 10 being major stress, like surviving a natural disaster or having a heart attack. He may not feel great about getting a B on a test, but where would this realistically fall on the scale? Probably not a 10. Unless there was a lot writing on this test, probably not even a 5. Maybe a 1 or a 2? Using a stress scale can often provide perspective for those of us who struggle with perfectionism or who catastrophize our problems. Finding the right cost-benefit ratio would involve asking, what are the relative costs and benefits of our extreme terms or perfectionistic standards? Do they sometimes cost more than they're worth? I'm not saying we shouldn't have high goals. Aiming high helps us achieve unprecedented success in sports, school, medicine, technology, and so on. But the benefits of perfectionism can be short-lived. Our happiness and satisfaction may not last because behind every goal reached, 
another one immediately looms in the distance. The cost can be high in terms of low self-esteem, discouragement, depression, and anxiety. Following the golden rule would involve asking, what standards would be kindest toward ourselves and toward others? Would it be black and white perfectionism or standards that are more realistically within reach? We can all learn to take more pleasure in the journey of life. Celebrating small successes along the way will help us stay motivated to reach our end goals. Ted may feel more comfortable in his black and white world, but maybe he could learn to hang out in the gray a bit more often. Mistakes aren't bad. They're opportunities for learning and personal growth. When asked about his many failed attempts to invent the electric light bulb, Thomas Edison said, I'm not discouraged because every wrong attempt discarded is another step forward. Please like and share this content and take a few seconds right now to subscribe. Thanks so much.